One of my favorite things when it comes to Blender, apart from Blender itself, is the community surrounding it. Apart from some, let's say, rough reactions to opinions about competing softwares, the Blender community is generally welcoming to everyone, and will gladly point you in helpful directions when you're starting out. So I wasn't surprised when, after talking about the troubles I had trying to make the binary counter that I made in this video rotate, people reached out to tell me that they had actually taken it as a challenge and worked it out for themselves. And not only that, after talking to them on my Discord, oh yeah, I have a Discord now, link in description, they were more than happy to provide me with the blend file so that I could check it out on my own. So this video will be a follow-up or an extension to my previous binary counter video, so go check that one out and come back here if you want to follow along. The first solution come courtesy of Alek Yegorov, and it's an approach that I really like due to its relative simplicity. So with the hexagon set up using a mesh line and an instance on points node, we can go through how it works. We use the combined XYZ node to only affect the rotation on one axis, the X axis in this case. The map range node in this case is used to remap how far the tile rotates and at which values it should rotate at all. The reason for setting that to min value to 1.571 is because it's half of pi, which in radians is a quarter of rotation. Changing the from max value will also affect how fast the tiles rotate into position. Over here we do some power and modular calculations, much like in the original setup to determine when a tile should be in either its on or off position. We first take the index of each point on the mesh line, which starts at 0, and add 1 to it to get the range from 1 to 10 instead of 0 to 9. We then set the index as the exponent in base 2, and perform some modular operation with whatever value we are currently using as the input. We then take this new value and subtract 2 to the power of the proper index, in this case in the range 0 to 9. Enabling clamp on the map range node ensures that we don't get negative values, and this is essentially what makes this all work the way it does. If all this seems confusing, don't worry, it is. The point is that we now have a gradient between 0 and 1.571 that repeats in cycles of differing lengths, with the lengths being determined by the index. And of course, we don't have to use this setup to drive just rotations. We could instead use it to affect the locations of each tile like this, creating something similar to engine pistons. Another solution that was sent to me comes courtesy of Yen and apparently it's a purely mathematical approach to write by pen and paper. Neat. So let's check it out and go through it to make sense of how it works. Oh. Oh. I'm not going to try and explain the maths behind this, but they were kind enough to leave a note that provides some explanation to what's going on, along with labeled groups in the geonodes. I have linked the channels of both of these very kind people in the description, so go send them some love. Yen also told me they are planning on making their own channel with focus on Blender and or Maths, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Before I end this video, I want to make something with this new rotating counter. So let's create a binary counter that counts to a Google, and let's give it a more interesting look than a line of hexagons. So for this we don't have to worry about the rotation, so let's select the rotation solution and press Ctrl G to make a separate group. I want to use cubes instead of hexagons, so add a cube to the scene in a new collection, scale it down on the C axis, apply scale, and drag it into the gear notes tree, then disable the collection. Now, to count to a Google in binary, we need 333 bits, so in extension, we need 333 points to instantiate our counter on. An easy way to do this is by swapping the mesh line for a grid. Set the vertices X to 34 and vertices Y to 10, for a total of 340 vertices. Then adjust the size X and Y to get a uniform grid. Now we just need to remove the points we don't want, and we can do that by adding a delete geometry node. This node has a selection input, and we can use that to specify which points to delete. By using the index and the compare floats node, we can say that we want to remove every point that has an index that is greater than 332. This leaves us with 333 points left in the grid. 
In order to adjust the direction of the tile rotations, duplicate the 2 radians node and connect it to the C socket of the combined XYZ node. I will set the value to negative 90 in order to rotate the tiles 90 degrees. I will do the same for the Y socket, but instead of 90 I will set the value to 180. To make the whole effect easier to see, enable the collection with the cube, select it and press tab to go to edit mode. Select the top face and press I to inset, drag the mouse and then left click to confirm. After that, press E to extrude and drag down to make a small hole. Next, go to the materials tab and create two new materials, one called base and the other called glow. Set the color of the base material to black. Set the color and emission color of the glow material to something bright. And set the emission strength to something like 5. With the face in the hole selected in edit mode, select the glow material and press assign to assign that material to that specific face. Now let's just set the end frame of our scene to infinity and let it roll. And since I have set it to increase by 1 roughly every second, this final tile rolls over after a Google seconds, or about 3.17 times 10 to the power of 92 years. See you then.